Three months ago, two of this town's top athletes were badly hurt in a crash. That event ended up costing Matt Dennison his life at the young age of 17. The beautiful side of this ugly twist of fate was how the town, local hockey community, and even the Boston and Providence Bruins came together to honor and support Dennison and his best friend, goalie Kevin McDonald, who survived the crash with severe injuries. The crash immediately turned the families of Dennison and McDonald into advocates for tougher DUI laws. The man who was driving the other vehicle was charged with driving under the influence and driving to endanger. He walked away unhurt and still has his license. Things like this have happened before. People have been hurt and killed by others driving under the influence of alcohol or other drugs. And the aftermath of such events often follows a predictable pattern. People mourn the loss, feel bad about what happened, and others promise change. But all too often, especially after time passes, bills that were tougher than drunk driving laws do not pass. So what happens now? Three months removed from the events that rocked West Warwick and the hockey community, is the issue of changing the DUI laws starting to fade away again? Will other families be violently and suddenly plunged into the role of advocate after another crash? We'll talk to Matt's father, Mark Dennison, and his coach, Justin Lake, about these issues and more on this episode of the Words with Wizards podcast. This is the Words with Wizards podcast, your look at the world through the lens of West Warwick High School. It's where we talk to interesting people, visit cool places, and sometimes hit on a big story. And at the end of it all, you'll learn a little more about what's going on in the land of the orange and black. And now, here's your host, Eric White. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. This is episode 23 and today is Monday, May 9th, 2022. This is the Words with Wizards podcast. Well, I was fortunate to sit down with Mark Dennison and Justin Lake to talk about the DUI laws. The wounds are still fresh with the grief both men feel with the loss of Matt Dennison, a hockey champion, West Warwick High School senior, and all-state selection who passed away recently from the injuries of that car crash. Lake was not only Matt and Kevin's coach, but he has been a police officer for four years in the town of West Warwick. And in that job, he often deals with alcohol and drug-related crimes. He was able to give us the police officer's perspective on the DUI issue. And Mr. Dennison, whose wife Brenda and daughter Katie sat in on the interview, find themselves at the forefront of an issue which has seen little change over the years. And also, I wanted to know, how can a family try to heal from such a tragic loss? of a loved one, while at the same time championing a cause that triggers raw emotions. Here's what they had to say. As a police officer, you have a unique perspective on this issue. How often on the job do you deal with people driving under the influence or anything that involves alcohol? Uh, it's, it's mostly daily. I mean, we, we have our uh, incidences where um, they result in motor vehicle accidents or we find them operating without um, while intoxicated prior to the motor vehicle accidents uh, sadly due to our um, our staffing issues and you know how under staffed we are we don't have the manpower really to go out there and and really crush the um, the proactive enforcement with that in that aspect and you know West Warwick wise yeah uh, as for you know other departments state to state police they have their what they call their uh, if I don't know if they can get it right but it's I think it's the wolf pack mm -hmm. um, the state police have the wolf pack unit out there and and uh, their job is strictly to find DUI operators and um, they do a phenomenal job out there getting you know throughout that they're in the West Warwick almost nightly I see two or three cruisers were driving through West Warwick so yeah um, between them and you know Warwick has their traffic units that are out there looking for DUIs and simply we're just we just don't have the manpower sometimes yeah, absolutely uh, we're going call to call and, and yeah. stuff like that but if we see them we, we stop them yeah um, and ultimately we you know, we'll make that arrest when we have to but um, 
we uh, yeah we take it we take it very to heart recently yeah um, you know it was a few days after Matthews and Kevin's accident um, we had you know we had two DUI arrests within um, a few days and and it kind of it kind of got a little like emotional inside the, the police department not only on my aspect um, just the way the guy was talking like it was no issue um, I kind of just walked in at the the wrong time as uh, one of the officers tried yeah. to explain to him how emotional it was in the police department right now um, regarding DUIs so yeah um, it was uh, you know it, it's it's definitely a difficult thing um, the laws aren't built for the um, prosecution it's built for the defense attorneys and the DUI arrests themselves are extremely lengthy and that's where the issue comes into bringing the I don't know bringing the individuals in mm-hmm. you could take three to four hours to complete a full arrest for a uh, DUI and really and, and that's you know and that's where your issues come in for manpower you know yes. and we speak about that and I'm not saying that we don't make DUI arrests at all because no, we but do. There's we only do so many people. If we see them, we'll stop them. Yeah. And um, you know, but you're thinking about taking a you know four. You have four police officers in the town of West Warwick. Yeah. Four patrol officers, and so you're taking one patrol officer for four hours out of his whole eight-hour shift off the road. You know, completing a DUI arrest, and yeah. you know that's where you run into issues. Now it's gonna ask a question which might sound strange to you because you said it takes what, three to four hours to complete that arrest. So the the natural question that comes into my mind was, how long does the average arrest take? But is there an average, or, you know, no, there's no how, average does that arrest. Com- how does that compare to other things? That, that, that's three to four hours for to process one arrest. Is that? No, there's, like, no, there's no average arrest, but I'll put it in perspective. Uh, we had a domestic simple assault take place this afternoon. The yeah, call came morning. in. The call came in at 10.30. Uh, the arrest report was done by... 11.45. Both okay. processed in the cell block. So um, waiting upon the bail commissioner or to be transported to the, co- the hot courthouse. Gotcha. Gotcha. So that's one of those things that um, D- DUI, uh, DUI arrest, one of those things that's going to chew up a lot of time. And, you know, just for the s- simple sake of numbers, I mean, I don't think that your department is in the same boat as a lot of other cities and towns around the state. You only have so many people. Yeah. Well, I'll start with you, Coach Lake, and then I'll go over to you, Mr. Dennison. Uh what would you consider a victory for changing DUI laws? So ultimately, on my end, um, I let's start treating the suspect like the suspect, not the victim. Um, and obviously, I have a background and, and a degree in criminal justice, and I understand that you're innocent until proven guilty, and, and that's how everyone should believe. Yeah. Um, but there's there's some type of thought process to put into perspective here that you know there has to be a reason why this officer made the arrest right we didn't just go out and arrest a sober man um so you can't just say they're innocent until proven guilty they are absolutely are but they're it's it's duis are more on the line of a speeding ticket correct yeah so if if you you know if you want to contest it go right ahead but you still have that ticket you still have the it's still going to be on your record even if it's dismissed or not yes and they are treated as if they're the victim, right? So because they're can not, I wouldn't use the word victim, but that's to, yeah. the, to the mourning families. That's how it feels, right? Because yes. we're not the victims anymore. This guy is because he's being let off. Yes. Um, you know, treat them. You know, give them the harshest penalty up front. You know, yeah. there's no reason why. You know, for Matt's example, this individual should be held of his license back and should be able to trans, you know, drive up out of state and and yes. stuff like that. You know, let's. You know, he's not. He's innocent, yes, because yeah. he hasn't been found guilty. Yeah. But he did commit a crime. Yeah. And until then, let until he can prove his innocence, let's yeah. try and make our way to making it harder for him to live at that point. Yeah. Um, because, like I said, it's not that he we just they didn't the state police didn't arrest the sober individual. Yeah. Right. And yes. we can yes. th- we all know that a intoxicated individual was arrested. Yeah. Right. So let's. The, the fact that, you know, whether he was under the legal limit, above the legal limit, or we want to get to illegalities, and, and that's what the court's for, and yes. that's what to found innocent until prov- proven guilty. Yes. You know, before all that happens, let's, let's, you know, let's make sure he realizes that no matter what it was, or the legalities, or the loopholes, or whatever it's going to be with inside the courtrooms, you know, there is some type of, you know, holding people accountable for the ox- actions that they've made. Yes. 
And it's interesting you say that because you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. That's the way the criminal justice system works. But in an, in an instance like this or speeding, mm-hmm. you're, caught, you're, you're caught speeding. You were speeding. You were already, I mean, you're not convicted of it yet, so to speak. And that's why in journalism school they drilled it into us to say alleged. Yep. Somebody on Facebook said, why are we calling this guy alleged? We know he did it, which is a, which is a very good point. Yes. But until they're convicted, you have to say alleged, or you get sued for it, you know. Absolutely. And so, yeah. you know, and, but that's interesting because, you know, a lot of times when somebody's charged with a crime, you might not know whether they did it or not. Correct. But here, uh, there was a great point you brought up. You know something happened. They were speeding or what have you. Yes. We would like to thank the West Warwick Teachers Alliance a supporter of West Warwick High School TV and the media broadcasting and journalism pathway, the WWTA, representing West Warwick educators in unity. Mr. Dennison, what would you consider a victory on this as far as changing the DUI laws? Sure, but for a second, let me go back to that alleged term. Okay. Um, I don't say that word in this um, this situation. Um, I don't go out of my way to avoid it. It's just I dare somebody to sue me in my position right now mm-hmm. for not saying the word alleged. Let's see how successful they are with that one. Yeah. Um, but, but to answer your other question, uh, what I would consider a victory in this situation was for these laws to change, particularly the punishments, to be more of a deterrent. It, it would be a victory to me if there's an individual sitting at a restaurant or bar who's had three, maybe four drinks, and he's been there a couple of hours, and before he orders that next one, he says to himself or herself, I think this one might put me over. And I know if I get caught while I'm over, I'm going to, for instance, lose my license for five years, or I'm going to go to jail for a year. Yeah. And is it worth that? Yeah. And I think the punishments need to get to that point where we really make, make people consider their futures are going to be affected if they just have this one more drink. Yes. And I think that's the way to keep these roads safer. Yes. You know, some people that I've told these these um, punishments about, like what I would like to see as far as the sentence, they, they think it's a little outrageous. And it is. And that's by design. Because there's nothing more outrageous than bearing your own child right now. Mm. So I do want these outrageous punishments to be put in place so people really do consider do I need that last drink or can I just order a water or a soda and sit here and talk to my friends yeah. if I want to extend my, my time at the restaurant or the bar yes you know let, let's make yes. wise choices we're adults the drinking age is 21 for a reason you're yes. an adult let's make wise decisions absolutely and not put the public in danger absolutely we were talking uh, a couple of days ago on the phone about the, the laws the way they are now and I believe the one thing that has changed it as, as you had said was having a DUI wiped from your record it used to be after five years but now it's ten years correct the okay. Senate just passed that bill uh, less than a month ago where the look-back period went from five years to ten years okay. and in speaking okay. with the legislator who sponsored that bill it's taken him 12 years to get that passed Wow and that is going from five to ten I, it's my belief it should be a lifetime look back, which many states do have. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lifetime look back is what we need because if you if you make a mistake or you make a poor decision, I should sh- should say yeah. when you're 23 years old, yeah, for instance, and then you do it again when you're 53 years old. Why would that second time be considered your first offense? Yeah, you've put the public in danger once already, so let's not do it again. Yes. so I think it should be a lifetime look back. Yeah. This is an issue, you know, as we had said, the damage is irreversible, obviously. It is. This should be that, that one issue, or one of the sacred issues where, you, you know, one, one strike, two strike, three strikes counts for the life, you, yeah. you know, no matter how much time. Right. How do you balance healing, trying to heal from what's happened, to advocating? How do you balance the two? It's not so much a balance, Mr. White. It's it's simply when you find something of purpose, you allow it to consume you, quite honestly, so you don't let those bad thoughts into your head. 
it's not that you're you're putting off addressing those bad thoughts and the grief mm -hmm. and the sadness, but you allow yourself to go elsewhere, especially if it's in Matthew's name. Yeah. Uh, to do to do good in Matthew's name, uh, you allow yourself to go there. To, to healing's not the word I'm looking for, but you just want to you want to you can't feel as bad as I feel 24 hours a day. Mm. Y you won't be here long if you do. So you it's it's not that you're purposely balancing it. You're letting it happen happen organically. Yeah. And when I feel like there's something some some situation I can take on a mission, for instance that's helpful um, because it's helping me and it's doing so in Matthew's name. Is there anything cathartic about advocating for this issue? And I'm not, I'm, I don't mean to suggest that it makes everything okay by right. any stretch or even, but is there some kind of relief or catharsis in being a warrior on this issue? Well, the relief I get is knowing that what I'm trying to accomplish will help another family avoid what we're going through. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. It, it, it truly tears us apart minute by minute of every single day. And I never understood the level of pain that's been thrust upon me right now. Um, and when I talk about pain, I mean emotional pain manifests itself into physical pain. And I didn't realize it could be like that. So yeah I, I I think that's why why I do it um, it's just knowing that if we're successful at least it'll be minimized it'll never be eliminated we understand that we're always going to have situations where people make poor decisions that affect others but if we can sa I hate to sound cliche if we can save one family from the pain that we're going through then on some level it's it's all worth it but with this issue there have been other serious things that have happened before. Tori Lynn Andriozzi, yes. you know, um, and some of the people who were mentioned on the... Olivia um, Passaretti. Yes, uh, just this January, I believe. Yes, a month and a half prior to Matthew and Kevin's accident. So these things have happened before, and they happen. People feel awful about them. People say they're going to change things, and then nothing changes. Are we approaching that point where it's starting to fade into the past and how do you keep this top of mind I believe it or not I think we are approaching that already mm -hmm. and it's my job now it's my purpose in life to make sure that their situation and Matthew's death are never forgotten and if I don't make sure that that happens then I've failed so whether it's going up to the state house and making noise up there calling emailing texting our legislators yeah. um, talking to neighbors, talking to the community, talking to uh, a junior and senior class right before their prom, whatever it might be. We're, we're so early on in our situation, it's, it's very difficult to do these things. But again, I think you can sense, like, now we're, we're talking about something, and yes. I, I'm not sitting here crying like I typically would be doing if I were sitting at home. Yeah. It's giving me a purpose. Yeah. And again, if I don't follow through on that and make sure that Matthew's name doesn't fade away, then I've failed. And I'm going to spend the rest of my life, until the day I die, whenever that may be, making sure that nobody forgets his name and why we're talking about him. Yes. Hopefully there comes a day when you can remember Matthew, but you don't have to call for the laws to change because they have been changed. I Wouldn't agree. that be something? That would be amazing. That would be... It's going to take a lot of work, but we're not going anywhere until I, they do. So. Yeah. Really. I mean, it's... Uh, I think it's human nature. You know, we know these things. We don't want them to happen. Something bad happens. We say we're going to do something, and then we're on to the next thing. And but this is an issue where we shouldn't be on to the next thing. No. You know, the bill that was uh, that that just passed the House came up. You you guys heard about it, and you mobilized like right away. We did. And um, then I saw I, I saw you know some of my students with you guys up at the uh, up at the hockey rink, and then and Kevin's mom. Are you talking to any any legislators or anybody right now? And, and you know, tell me what you can. If there's something sure. you're not supposed to tell me, then don't worry no, no, about it. But. Just I'll, I'll keep it somewhat vague. Um, okay. We are. We are working with both the House and the Senate side. We have the ears of our our own representatives, the one you know, the ones that represent us directly. Yeah. And they're doing their job so far in in making some noise with their colleagues. Yeah. And yeah, they they absolutely snuck past. 
us the um, it's uh, H7060, which is the bill that um, speaks to happy hour. Yeah. And um, I said it on the news the other day that, you know, when we took on this new mission that we never expected to, we were going to be going on offense. And yesterday, or actually the day before, they put us on defense because they put something through the House. It still has to clear the Senate, which is our, our last true hope of defeating this. Um, but we're on defense now. So yeah. before we get started on crafting new legislation, we have to defeat some that's already crafted and, and being debated at the state house. Yes. And we are working with our, our legislators on that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I watched the coverage on that after I, I had spoken to you. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I'm in agreement with you that, that, that this promotes if you're mentioning alcohol, you're promoting drinking. It's that. It's not that complicated. And uh, I think the, the the point that the restaurant people were making, I don't think any of us here don't think that they haven't suffered during the pandemic. But this is not the way. I mean, I, I, if it's really about food, then why mention the alcohol? And it, again, I'll, I'll remain a little vague here. I won't give you the names of the establishments, yeah. but all the, the the restaurants and establishments that we've contacted or some other legislators have contacted on our behalf, none of them want this. It, it really places a layer of liability on them that they don't want to have to deal with. Mm. And we certainly don't want the servers to be liable for this as well. Yeah. You know, because just because they're TIP certified, it, it's, you know, again, the, the bill was so poorly crafted, it doesn't speak to who is going to receive a penalty. Is mm. it the establishment? Is it the server? Yeah, we, that that should be outlined in any bill. Yes. They, yes, they didn't outline penalties at all. So what does happen when somebody violates this? Mm. The terms of this bill. Yeah. So there's a lot to be done here, um, and and from the people we've spoken to, they honestly don't want it. But we all know how it works. Yeah. If one, we'll use East Greenwich for for example. Sure. Everybody's familiar with with Main Street and East Greenwich. Yeah. A lot of restaurants and mm -hmm. bars. If one establishment does it the guy next to him has to do it too to keep up yes otherwise he's going to lose business and next thing you know both sides of main street have happy hour and now you know the person who was hired to promote this bill at the state house um said first of all that the victim's families just don't get what we're trying to do they don't get the point and he claims that it's not a big deal because most of these happy hours will take place early afternoon he didn't he you know, it's always been my impression it's late afternoon, 4 to 7-ish. Like an after-work thing. Right. Yeah. But he said early afternoon, which scares me Hi, to death, quite Hi. frankly. Yeah. Because what happens right after early afternoon? The school buses start rolling. Right. Yeah. The kids driving, you know, the juniors and seniors are driving out of the high schools. Yes. And they're making their way home. Or even after their sports are done or their clubs mm. are done. You, that'll push them a, even a little later. Yes. So there's a, a, a real, real danger to this. Yes. And we just don't need to promote drinking any more than, than we already do. Yeah. I've always said, if you need $2 beers to have a good time, then you're not, you're not responsible enough to drink, mm -hmm. or you're not financially responsible enough to drink. If yeah, you can't afford a 6 or a $7 beer, yeah. look, if you want to take a $10 beer and, and have 10 of them, you're out $100 versus $20. Yeah. We also, yeah. We also got to think, um, 1985 is when the state of Rhode Island banned the happy hour from Rhode Island. Um, and that was the main push for that was due to kids getting out of school, the time of the hour of it happening, the increase in driving, drunk driving, um, accidents and uh, arrests during those times. Um, so the state's taking a complete step back, right? I understand COVID hit hard. I yeah. understand restaurants are hurting. Taking lives at hand is not the answer. You know, we're, we've... As a state, we move forward. We did. Yes. We did the correct thing. We did the right, uh, passed the right bills and passed the right laws to eliminate these issues from happening. Yeah. Just because of money, we're taking a step back, mm -hmm. right? So they would have been better off, you know, coming up with some other reason, way of making these restaurants more money. C figure it out, yeah. right? Yeah. Taking a law off the books that s helped protect lives yeah. is not the answer. Yes. And I think that's very well said. And um, um, and I I see uh, we may have uh, gone 
over. So if you need to go and protect the public, don't feel bad about leaving me. No, because, we're good. We're uh, okay, good. okay. Um, Excellent. I, I, mean, I appreciate I just, you doing this. I'll just bring the happy hour back into perspective. I mean, sure. West Warwick, you know, it, this one hits hard. Matthew Dennison's um, death obviously hits really hard. But the happy hour, you know, bring opens up a lot of um, wounds for the West Warwick Police Department for the simple fact that Tori Andriozzi, um, was on East Greenwich Ave in the town of West Warwick, yeah. walking home from her school bus when an intoxicated operator injured her. Yeah. And but here we are, 20 years later, yeah. um, making a law that's going to promote that time frame to injure another kid. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and for as a police department and stuff like that, and the guys that were there, and the guys that I, I've talked to the female officers that were there and the male officers were there and and you know that was a multi-jurisdictional um case and it you know obviously we did a phenomenal job the state police and the warwick police department did a phenomenal job prosecuting it but yeah. we all understand the reason behind the law is yes. to promote um Restaurant. business yes and mm-hmm. you know we understand that they're hurting yes but it's ultimately promoting more drinking quicker and for cheaper. Yeah. And we're already the third worst in the state in the nation for our roads and the safety in our roadways. Yeah. So why are we going to w- work backwards here? Exactly. And uh, so technically this bill is passed the house. It goes to the Senate next and uh, any number of things can happen. It could get killed in the Senate in committee. The Senate could vote against it. It could get to the governor and the governor doesn't sign it or vetoes it or what have you so it's not um I, i'm curious to see what the temperature in the senate is uh as am i it, it, yeah and i think you uh coming out and speaking you know, giving your side i think that's definitely going to affect what happens in the senate you know that's something i'll definitely be keeping an eye on and i know you will absolutely as well one of the most beautiful moments out of what is it has been a very ugly situation was the stick salute and i wanted to ask you guys what was it like from your end to see that amount of respect i mean not as a hockey player but as a you know with, with all of those teams coming from all around the area in solidarity raising their sticks it was such a beautiful thing what was it like from you guys who were riding through that procession I'll, I'll start that off, then I'll let the family answer that question. But um, the Coaches Association reached out to me and said, you know, that obviously there's going to be a lot of kids that want to show up and show their support. And they asked, you know, how, how can we do it? And I said, you know, you guys can do whatever you want. Let, you know, just let me know what, what you guys are doing so I can tell the family. And, you know, and they came up with that idea to, you know, have the little stick salute go through the, the ice rink. And I said to myself, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, three or four kids from each school will probably show up, the kids that actually knew Matt or, or whatnot. And, you know, when we pulled around the corner of that ice rink and I saw the hundreds of, of kids, the hockey players, not only from high school but from rec teams and learn to skate teams and stuff like that, standing out there with their sticks on um, up in the air, it was just, it was, it, it was probably the only time I smiled that day um, because of the happiness it brought me, the happiness of how much Matt meant to all these kids. Um, the rest of the day was obviously tearful and it was made us made me feel warm inside Mm -hmm. that to know that you know he obviously made a impact in life and that he was able to uh you know all these people actually love him and love us and support or were there to support us so it felt amazing in my end and i honestly like i said i thought it was gonna be three (laughs) three kids from each school or whatever and it would have been lame but it it was planned pretty quickly too i mean it it wasn't awesome yeah so uh, you know, same as Justin, I, I kind of knew something like that was going to happen, but the the size of it really shocked me. And, you know, I think we discussed on the phone the other night w- what the hockey community means. And it is certainly different than, in my experience, than any other sport. Um, Matthew played baseball, great, great community there as well, but hockey's a little different, right? Yeah. It's, it's such a... It's such a commitment. When you're all in on hockey, you have to be just that, all in. You can't just dabble in it, right? Let's let's face it. The tuition's a lot of money. The yeah. equipment's a lot of money. You spend a lot of time away from home with other families in hotels, airplanes, you name it. Matthew's played all over the country. He's played in Toronto, 
so out of the country. Yeah. Um, Chicago, Nashville, and just, you know, all over the Northeast, different tournaments, different yeah. states. So when you do something like that, you develop these relationships with, with people. And even if you don't make direct contact with every hockey family, they know what it's all about. Therefore, they are part of your hockey family. Yeah. So we, we have this little saying, hockey family equals family. Yeah. And that goes from the the youngest of children just starting to play hockey. I think most people saw what happened with Patrice Bergeron where he sent Matthew a message. And he also um, he had a jersey, uh, a Boston Bruins number 16 jersey with Dennison on the back. And he hung that up on their bench before one of their games. And if you, if you look closely at that video, you see Patrice Bergeron hang that jersey. And he was about to step away, and something didn't look right to him. So he went back and he adjusted that jersey. And that right there tells you that this, this man, who's never met Matthew, gave him the ultimate respect because something didn't look quite right the way he left that jersey. Yeah. And Patrice Bergeron was Matthew's hero from the youngest age. Patrice Bergeron started playing in the NHL the year before Matthew was born, as a mm -hmm. matter of fact. So he's always been a part of Matthew's life. Yeah. So much so that when we, we, we got a couple of new puppies two years ago, yeah. Matthew asked if we could name the male dog Bergy. And that's that's who we have now is Bergy. Oh, that's great. So that's great. I see the tears are flowing yeah. over there. So, <laughs> so yeah, the, the hockey community is just simply amazing. And, and to see that outpouring of love that day, we felt it. And, and by the way, um, not just that day, all the days leading up to that. When yeah. Matthew was still with us and we were in the hospital, Yeah, you know, we, we felt like we were isolated because it could only be the family members. And I, by family, I don't mean extended. It was the three of us that were allowed to go in and see them. Yeah. We made a decision not to have anybody else in the hospital because we had to make a list. And there was six people on the list. Three of them were us. And then we had to choose three others and we could never adjust the list. We could never change that. So it wouldn't be fair to people. So we just decided it was going to be the three of us. Yeah. But to get back to my point, while we were in the hospital, you do a lot of things during the time you're there. When Matthew was in for a surgery or whatever the case might be, we needed to keep busy. We would we would surf social media and we would see the outpouring of support and love from everybody, not just the hockey community, but yeah, everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it was a tremendous display the day of his funeral. Yeah. Um, it was a little bit shocking. And uh, for those of you that are listening that know the, the geographical area here, obviously we were in the front of the procession. And we went through that line and we didn't see the end of the procession until we were beyond, almost near Kent County Courthouse. Uh -huh. So that's that's the the amount of love that, that the community showed for Matthew that day. Wow. Uh, is there anything that you want to say to the, the students, teachers, administrators who've been here to support you through this whole thing? Yeah, I would love to take this opportunity to thank everybody um, from the school committee, town council, school administrators, um, obviously the teachers, and right down to every student that, that knew Matthew and thinks about him, or maybe didn't even know Matthew mm. personally, but knew of him, or just learned about him through this situation. Yeah. You know, again, we see it and we feel it. The support has been amazing, and we cannot thank you enough. Um, at a certain point, I said to everybody, please keep it coming, mm -hmm. because we, we do feel it and, and see it, and that's what we need right now. Yeah. And on some level, we're, we're always going to need that. Yeah. And, um, we're, we're just so appreciative of everybody um, because, you know, it even comes down to a situation like this. Like, we're obviously going through the worst time of our lives. Yeah. But we still have room in our hearts to see the pain that the community feels. Yeah. And in this particular setting in the high school, it's difficult for me personally because I can see the pain in these kids' eyes because in some regards they are Matthew. Yeah. So... You know, we just want everybody to know how much it means to us, and we will never forget the support we've been shown, and hopefully we never have to, Yeah. but we will certainly pay it forward if the situation presents itself. I have something. I have a moment, and you can. if you don't want me to play it, I won't play it. 
I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is, but it's a it's a high moment from a game. I think I could play the same video for you. <laughs> I have <laughs> probably the, you and Mr. Cordick were announcing it. Uh, yes. Yes. It's, is it an overtime situation? It might be. Yes, you it can is. Certainly play okay. it because it's one of my favorites. Okay, great. And you know, and and did we have the lead and then gave up a goal late and then I it was think overtime? So, so, yeah. so hey, I'm there till the end Jimmy. anyway. Oh, yes, Josh, John, uh, Ethan Aruda, one oh, of Matthew's yeah. friends, Johnson, North Providence. Providence. So. Let me play this. Uh, you guys should Just, be able. Eric, to we shouldn't have been in that situation. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I know we were. Is I know. Bad I know. coaching. I know, and that spoken just like a coach. I mean, um, you know. Yeah, they were telling me it's my fault. So. Yeah. <laughs> but um. Oh, oh, maybe they, maybe a short-handed goal. Hey! Wow! Oh, woo! <laughs> Matt Dennison. <laughs> I was just about to say. <laughs> you know, I was just about to say Coach Lake will be happy with a tie. Wow. With a man in the box and Matt Dennison breaks away and he makes wow. sure this time he's not gonna get cheated and uh that's a great win for the for the uh the Night Wizards. Yeah. And that I I mean we had so much fun calling that game and you knew what I was gonna play before I played it. And Coach Lake is probably thinking, no, I'm not satisfied with the tie. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> the matchup there is definitely not uh, worth a tie. It would have been extremely upset. And Oof, but that so would have Matt, yes. believe me. Uh, along with his best friend Kevin, they probably would have been yeah. literally uh, losing their mind in the locker room alongside me. So And, and, and memory serves me correctly. Kevin, Kevin stood on his head to overuse that cliche <laughs> in that overtime period a couple of other times where it could have ended the other way. And, um, you know, that was a great moment, and I want you to know that, you know, despite everything that's happened, that when people talk about your son, yeah. it's always with a, a great memory, mm -hmm. the sense of humor. Uh, I know uh, some other people who have him or who had him in class. We're a big building but a small school, and, you know, just the joy that he brought to not only the sporting community but his friends and, uh, you know, and putting up with Kevin, that that takes a lot. Yeah, so a full time <laughs> job in itself. We love you, Kevin. Oh, I love Kevin. you, Kevin. Kevin, Kevin is a whole other show. I think. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, maybe, oh, maybe, maybe a series. Uh, but uh, you know, that. there was uh, you know the, the just the relationship that they had and um, the the joy that they brought to their friends right. and, the, and the sports uh, fans well, of the whole school is immeasurable. Oh, is there anything that, well, that I, just, I forgot to ask that you want to add? Because I do on occasion make a mistake. I, I just want to go back to that, that clip you played yes. one minute ago. Um, if you ever see the video, and this is the proud dad talking, uh, you'll see Matthew go to each player. Now, there's only four players on the ice besides Kevin, four skaters, and he yep. was one of them. He went to the other three, and he told them what he wanted to do. And I won't name names, but he got a little pushback from one of them. Mm-hmm. And he said, no, this is what we're going to do. We've got one shot. And if you watch the video unfold, you'll see everybody did their job, as Bill Belichick would say. Yeah. And the second that puck was dropped, Matthew didn't even look at it. He just took off. Mm. And I, I believe it was Egan Usler who hit him with the pass. Yeah. 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 Uh, Ethan Laramie um, won the draw. And then... Um, Egan hit him with the pass, and it was an airmailed pass. It yeah. landed right in front of him. Yep. And, you know, that is something that just goes to the leadership that Matthew showed, even as a junior. That was his junior year. Yeah. And I think that's why it's one of the reasons um, Coach Lake here. So uh, that, that play is actually called yeah. the Henault. The so Henault? Okay. Oh, boy. If you, if you know um, Matt Henault, I mean, that's the, we literally that, that play is called the Henault. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, I don't know if he called that or if I called that or who called that, yeah. but, I mean, clearly it works. So. Yeah, absolutely. That, and, you know, you don't see shorthanded goals often. When, you, when, you're, when you're down one, you're thinking, let's kill this penalty and then see what happens. But you had you know, the penalty's two minute. You had a minute and 30-something left. So if you were going to win, it had to be by a shorthanded yep, goal. It and did. it was, and it was so exciting. The pass was beautiful. I hope at least we were able to bring back a little bit of the past. I know we have the locker dedicated to Matthew and that's yes. a real fantastic it, it looks fantastic it's a great it idea his, it's, his teammates idea that's yeah. that's fantastic anything about the naming of the arena 
Is, has oh. that been pro- that's been <laughs> I've, I've heard that that was proposed and I, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna respectfully stay out of this yeah. one um, I yeah. would never want to disrespect mr. Majera yeah, um, yeah. Um, and you know I of course you want to see your son's name shining in that spotlight at all times but you know again the the whole hockey culture is you know you don't you don't ask for more yeah so you know, I, I know that that's been a debate online that's been raging. I had heard it. I had heard it, too. So I don't think so, anything is official. But I can, I can help answer some questions. Okay. Um, and I'm not going to say exactly what's going to happen, um, but there's more to come. Okay. Um, there's not uh, – it's not – we're not renaming the rink, okay? Yeah. Um, but there's, there's definitely more um, that we're going to do to make sure Matthew stays alive in, inside that arena. That's great. Any moments that stand out? I'll start, I'll start with you, Dad, and then we can go to you, Coach. Any, any any moments, either on the ice, off the ice, that stand out, humorous, something that, you know, when you think of Matt, this pops into your head yeah. every once in a while. I mean, you probably have a lot of them. And yeah, there's a lot of what, what you can't say. What, what <laughs> What you said, what you said on Channel Twelve, that was a beautiful piece Patrick a little did, yeah. and uh, the good night, sir, oh, was yeah. just. Uh, that was I still say that to him every single day when I leave the cemetery. Yeah. So, I I, I won't give you a um, a funny story. Okay. But I'll, I'll leave your audience with this. Um, the day of the crash, as most people know, Matthew and Kevin were going down to a junior hockey organization as part of their prospect day. Yeah. And I just described this to Mrs. Hassel about an hour ago. You know, a lot of times within a family, there can be tension. You can have a bad day. You could be upset with your son. Your son could be upset with his mother, whatever the case might be. I am nothing but thankful for the fact that the day of the, that crash, our family was in such a good place. We were all happy. Matthew was happy. He was going to do something he loved, which was about hockey and his future. So we were in a very, very good place, and I'm just thankful I hadn't been yelling at him about the condition of his bedroom that day or something like that. But I just want everybody to know that, um, and and the the Norwich coach came to the, the charity game last weekend, and he gave me a pretty good understanding of Matthew's last few hours before the crash, which were spent in his rink with his organization. And I I took peace in the fact that my son was extremely happy mm. before that crash mm. and that brings a level of peace and I, I hope that that little story um, brings peace to some others another thing I have to say about Matt is he's just he was just you know it sounds cliche um, you know a leader that somebody should look up to and stuff like that but he really was um, from all of uh, from the, the kids that are the same age to him to the kids that were freshmen uh, they they just all looked up to everything he had to say or did and there wasn't one day and I, I we talked about this because we started I came up yesterday just randomly came up with uh, 16 push-ups 16 sit-ups for Matt um, for the whole, for the next year here and it, it the, the truth is we would do off ice after after practice and one day I, I I just sit back there in off ice it's not my job to run that there's you know I have assistance for that and I sat back and watched, and Matt was the only one that didn't say a word, didn't goof off, just simply did the workout and did it to its top-notch ability, his top-notch ability. And I lost my mind at the end to on the kids because and I was like, you guys all need to look over there and see Matt and see how he's sweating and see how he's tired and he's exhausted. I go, not one of you worked to his ability today. You guys were joking around. You weren't listening to Coach Ryan. You weren't doing what you were supposed to be doing. And that's not going to get us to the next level. Your captain's leading by example. It's time for you guys to follow him. And they, you know, they all kind of put their head down. It was like, I'll see you guys tomorrow. And we moved on. But that's a prime example of just on and off the ice, whether if it was in the locker room, being the guy to, like, listen, it's okay to goof around right now. Let's goof around. Let's have some fun. And don't get me wrong. They had their fun in there. And, um, you know, or on the ice when it's time to buckle down and let's, you know, let's figure out what we're going to do to win this game here. And yeah. Or I need an extra shift out of you. He was always there and ready to go. And But my my most, you know, my most important thing out of him is 
him being that leader, him being yeah. leading by example, not only verbally, yeah. but simply doing what's right at the right time and what needs to be done at the right time is simply is is how he needs to be remembered. And, and just to add to that, I can one hundred percent say with certainty that Matthew hated every second of those off ice <laughs> workouts. He he could not yeah. stand. They all do that yeah. stuff. <laughs> but but it just shows you the character and the leadership within yeah. Matthew, where he just. As Justin said, he put his head down, he buried his head, and he just he did his thing. Mm-hmm. And that's um, that's a quality um, you, you can't always teach, but you, you just you want to at least try to emulate that. Thanks for tuning in. All music and sound effects for the podcast come from We Video, Speech Allo, and My Instance, which I use along with Twisted Wave to produce the show. This has been a presentation of the Media Broadcasting and Journalism Pathway at West Warwick High School. If you're a student interested in learning more about radio, TV, and journalism, then then you can get in touch with me, Mr. White, at ewhite at www-ps.com. More information about the Pathway is also below on the YouTube version of this show. You can also listen to the Words with Wizards podcast on Spotify and Google. The Pathway and shows like this are not possible without sponsor support. Part of being a sponsor is that you and your business can get exposure on this and other Pathway broadcasts. Funding goes toward the purchase of new equipment, student scholarships, and professional development. You can find more information on sponsorships, which are tax deductible, at the bottom of the YouTube version of this podcast. Speaking of sponsorships, a big thank you to the West Warwick Teachers Alliance, which has been a great and supportive sponsor throughout this entire year. Thank you very much for your support. Representing West Warwick teachers in unity. Have an idea for the show? Visit the Words with Wizards webpage at www.hstv.com. There's a form on the page that you can fill out to let me know about your ideas for the show. And that's it for me today. We'll see you back here soon, I promise. Until then, stay safe and stay informed.